Cork pilots must be prepared for mountainous seas when boarding ships beyond the harbour entrance. And it's the skill of the coxswain manoeuvring the boat that makes the difference between the pilot boarding or ending up in the sea. Both must have complete faith in their high-speed launch. Boat designer and builder Frank Kowalski is well aware of what they need. And before he hands any boat over, he tests them himself in the most treacherous conditions the wild seas around Cork and Muster. I've always found the sea and, and storms and large waves a, a fascination. I like to see the force of nature and how that force of nature reacts on the boats I design. It was the Port of Cork who commissioned Frank's first pilot launch. It was quite an act of faith, I have to say. We'd never built a pilot boat before. Pilot boats are quite specific and specialised. They have to be very strong. And I always appreciate that because everyone needs a, a start, everyone needs a helping hand, and this really was it for us. With the success of his Cork pilot boats, Frank now sells his interceptors all over the world. This boat is headed for the port of Adani in India. It's always a bit sad to see him go, really. <laughs> we spent a year working on them. You'll never see them again when they go. Frank designs all the boats himself and employs a highly skilled team at his Cork boatyard. And the requirements for the launches are constantly changing. Today, I suppose the main thing is that uh, as the ships get larger and larger, uh, the pilots have to go further and further offshore. The further offshore you go, in, certainly in the winter times, you're going to encounter larger waves and more extreme weather. They have to be built very strongly. If you can imagine, you know, if you're going up the face of a seven or eight meter wave, when the boat comes over the crest of the wave, it can quite literally fall 14, 15, even 20 foot vertically down into the trough. With ports operating 24 hours a day and thousands of ships needing to be boarded, the launches need to be fast. They really have to achieve about 25 knots as an operational speed. Invariably, a pilot boat is, a, is quite a heavy thing. It's not like a pleasure boat. The pilot boats get away, you know, upwards of 20, 25, even 30 tons for the larger ones. So they do require quite a large uh, amount of horsepower to drive them. Typically, you'd be looking at uh, a pair of 30 litre, 550 horsepower engines in there, say the Interceptor 48 or 42, up to uh, you could have 1,000 horsepower in some of the larger pilot boats to achieve those speeds. But before any launch is handed over, Frank has to test it to the limit. If you're a boat designer and you're designing boats to operate in all weathers and you're making claims that they can do this, you really have to prove it yourself. So at the City Keys in Cork, Frank tests what would happen if a launch capsized at sea. OK, let's do it. I wanted to experience the, the forces that would be involved should this happen so that I could A, design the self-writing ability of the boats and understand the forces that were going to be imparted on the crew if this did happen. <laughs> there was only one way to find out, really, was to actually do it and see what, see what it felt like. Yeah, that's fairly stressful now, isn't it? <laughs> Walk in a park. Walk in a park. <laughs> With the unpredictable nature of the weather and sea, the boats must also be trialled in less controlled environments. And Cork Harbour provides the ultimate proving ground. This year, I think we had nine storms during the winter, which were over force nine or ten, which was really quite exceptional. So we had, you know, plenty of opportunities to, to test the boats. And Cork Harbour is quite, quite an ideal testing ground. It has a very large estuary that uh, during the ebb tide, a large volume of water has to be put, forced out to a, narrow, a relatively narrow entrance. So what happens is you can have a, a two to two and a half knot tide ebbing out through the entrance. And in the winter time, it can encounter the large swells that are coming in from, from the south, southeast, southwest. And when these large swells meet the outgoing tide, they just mound up. Uh, they can become very steep. They can you know, almost double in size. And they start to break heavily. And this can create very treacherous conditions at the entrance to the port. And sometimes you can't determine when the ship will arrive. So sometimes a pilot boat has to go out through these conditions. The computer will only tell you so much sometimes. You just have to go out and put the boat in these conditions and see how she handles.
even if that means Frank taking her out in hurricane force winds. You know, the wind strengths were, were extremely high, certainly the highest we've ever experienced. I think it was well over 100 mile an hour. Uh, and it was literally stripping the surface of the sea. It's not often you see the sea smoking as if it was on fire. If you want to see how your boat will handle when she's surfing down the face of a 20-foot wave, you just have to do it. You just have to take your hands off the wheel, put the throttles down and see what happens. You know, you have to be careful. You have to, you know, treat the sea with a lot of respect and if you take liberties with it, it can bite you very quickly. Thank you.